I was a district sales manager for Intermax. It's a company that does wire transfers between the states in South America. My territory included from Central California all the way to the coast of California, and then all the way up to Santa Cruz. So it's quite a bit to cover. The company wanted to implement a new program where they had an app downloaded onto the iPhones, and this app was supposed to track everywhere we were at um, to it, the very smallest detail. Using her iPhone's built-in GPS, the app tracked Myrna wherever she went and kept track of how long she stayed in one place. Her employers even knew how fast she was driving, and she wasn't allowed to turn it off. They were monitoring all the time. So I felt, I don't know, exposed all the time. I never said no to office hours or work hours, but clearly you're tracking this. Not only are you tracking it, but you're recording it. And so why are you keeping this data? How much data do you have on me? And what are you gonna do with it? All those things were just scary. So myself and another coworker decided not to use this app, and were immediately terminated. Myrna filed a lawsuit against her employer. I was surprised by the brazenness that occurred here. I'm not surprised that an employer would try to track its employees. And we know uh, from past experience that our employers take a lot of liberties with our privacy rights. And they tell us sometimes on our way in the door, you're on our time, you're on our machines, uh, we have a right to look at what you're doing. But that was before the internet invaded our workplaces. It's a very different scenario where you have people out in the field, and especially when we're using the same device for work as well as for personal use, where you're monitoring what they're doing on their breaks and after their hours. That feels creepy to me, and I think it felt creepy to Myrna. So if our bosses and Google and our government are all trying to track us, what are we supposed to do? Just throw out our smartphones and disconnect from the internet entirely? Let's face it, that's never really going to happen. So the other extreme is we could throw privacy completely out the window. Think it's hard to imagine? Well, we don't have to. Welcome to Songdo, South Korea. Its developers call it a city of the future. Before 2001, all of this was underwater. To build Songdo, the planners first had to reclaim 1,500 acres from the Yellow Sea. If you were expecting flying autonomous cars and moving roadways, well, you won't find them here. What you will find is the country's tallest skyscraper, longest bridge, and most importantly, interconnectivity. Because Songdo was built literally from the ground up to be a smart city. Because it was built from scratch, it was easy to integrate a network of sensors throughout the city. And it's just as easy to forget that in Songdo, you're being watched. This is the Integrated Operations Center. Here, operators can monitor all the vital functions of the city. Everything from traffic, weather conditions, public transit and emergency response, to billboards, energy usage, and even waste disposal. This room is the city's brain. Traffic isn't just monitored from here, it's actually controlled. Operators can control the timing of the lights and use signage to reroute the flow of traffic. The system has a database for every license plate in the country. It knows every car in Songdo. Security cameras throughout the city act like an omnipresent police force, watching for and reporting suspicious activity in real time. Brian Bailey is a product manager at Samsung Biologistics. He moved his family to Songdo back in 2014. We've lived several places. Uh, Songdo is the safest city that we have ever lived in. Uh, we feel extremely safe with our children, letting them go around the city uh, without supervision and not have to worry about their safety. There are clear advantages to living in a city of the future. Uh, the internet is everywhere, so anywhere you go, 
you can get very good Wi-Fi signal. Uh, the buses have it, the subways have it, all the, the coffee shops and restaurants and stores have it. So being able to uh, access the internet is, is very, very convenient here. But in Songdo, privacy is pretty much non-existent. You can't do anything without being on camera here. I've heard that in that center, they can put like a little dot on you on the camera and they can follow you back for hours throughout Songdo. For real? They can follow you around for hours? They can just, by, with facial recognition talk, software, figure out where you are. And how do you feel about that? We just feel spied everywhere <laughs> we go. You, you feel spied on? Yeah. Just, I'm walking down the street, there are eyes everywhere. <laughs> you can't get away with anything. No. <laughs> Not anymore. When you're in Songdo, do you ever think about the cameras that are filming you? 눈보다 위에 있기 때문에 의식을 별로 안 하죠. 제가 재진 게 없는데 굳이 카메라를 의식할 필요가 없죠. Saying that you don't care about privacy because you've got nothing to hide is no different than saying you don't care about freedom of speech because you've got nothing to say. That's a fundamental misunderstanding of the nature of rights and what privacy really is, what it's for. Privacy isn't about having something to hide. Privacy is about having something to protect. And that's a free and open society. That thing is liberty. One thing we learned from Edward Snowden is that our uh, government has a rapacious appetite for data, including data about American citizens. And that's the United States, which is a sophisticated democracy. People around the world have even less protection than that from their governments. So what can happen if you forget that the little phone in your pocket is also a tracking device? In 2014, protesters in Kiev found out. After a clash with police, demonstrators in the area received an ominous text message. Dear subscriber, you have been registered as a participant in a mass disturbance. <laughs> 